Super Dave here with another review. Thundercats! Thundercats! Ho! Oh, and today another Super Day review. This time a Thundercats Lunatac. Our first Lunatac action figure that Super 7 has produced. And it is Aluro. And just take a look at how he how good he looks in the package. And at first glance, it does look like he is scaled correctly size-wise. We've had a little issue with that in some in this wave, but he looks like he is in scale. So we'll look at him because Aluro was tall. He's like taller than everybody else, but we'll see. <laughs> but he's looking awesome. Comes with a lot of accessories we'll take a look at. But let's go ahead and look at the artwork on the back. Just take a look at that. Oh, wow. He comes with his psych club. Oh, is he controlling your mind? Uh, are you being made to watch this video? <laughs> he's looking awesome unreal here i like it and then there is his bio if you'd like to pause and read that now you certainly can all right let's go ahead and break open this lunatic a Luro over here and oh wow what was that a storm is coming it's beginning to rain it's looking stormy over here for this review oh my it's kind of nerve-wracking over here for this review let's hurry up and below the, the glow of Plundar. And down below on a planet named Third Earth, where evil is abounding as the Lunatacs make their debut. It is none other than Aluro. We're first gonna take a look at his accessories. And first, taking a look at Aluro's hands, he comes with one, two, three and a half sets, just like Captain Shiner. Matter of fact, if you look over here, you see that he comes with a set of horizontally hinged weapon holding hands, then another horizontally hinged gesturing hand and pointer finger hand combo, and then an odd man out, he comes with this like slap your hand yes this five finger palm open wide open clawed hand and these are big hands which go well with Aluro he comes with two head sculpts he has this cackling talking shouting head here uh, really wide open mouth there and then he also comes with a more of a menacing grin just, you know, diabolical, he's mischievous, he's getting ready to do something with his long hair. He's looking cool there. Then he comes with this, like, cardboard glossy map. It's not plastic, it's kind of a thick cardboard type material with a gloss over it. But it is cool nonetheless for it as an accessory. And then we get his psych club. And we get two orbs for the site club the blue one which I have equipped here it plugs right in and it's kind of a hard plug you have to really adjust it to get it in there and then he comes with his yellow translucent uh, orb as well with the plug in the bottom and you can kind of see on that one that there's like a I don't know like a distortion underneath where one of the plugs go in and the same is true with the blue one but they are translucent and they're really cool. And then he comes with this little treasure box. And I apologize, I do not remember the names of these relics from the show, but they are really cool looking. And this little treasure chest does open up. We'll take a closer look at that when we equip accessories and do a closer look. And then I believe this goes on the inside of the treasure chest, but it's some kind of amulet. And I believe it's the one that gave him confidence. And we'll look at that here in just a moment. But that is all of his accessories. He is also, from the most part, we'll look at in comparisons, pretty much a tall fella. Uh, his head does look like it sits a little close to his body, like a no neck, but that may have been the way he looks. You know, looked in the cartoon, we'll take a look at that. But 
from what I'm seeing here, he comes really packed out with some awesome accessories. And we're going to take a closer look and equip some of those accessories right now. Ooh, get your umbrella. It's getting, getting a little stormy out here. <laughs> here we are to take a look at Aluro and a closer look at his accessories. Boy, it's stormy and rainy out here and there's such a mist going on. <coughs> All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our Luro and he's looking mischievous, really mischievous. Just take a look at that orb, his psych staff. He's going to put you under a spell and he's going to hypnotize you so he can control your mind. That's right, that's what he's gonna do. So let's first of all, and you can see I've equipped that pointer finger and he can kinda, you know, tell you what he's gonna do and, and hypnotize you and just look at those eyes that have like a, almost a hypnotic, spellbinding look to them. Just really cool looking facial features with a little moon icon like a lot of these lunatics from the moon of Plundar. But um, really cool looking hair, goes all the way down his back here. You can see his cool belt, that eye on it. Him and Triclops could, would get along really good from Masters of the Universe. Those big boots. We'll take a look at his height here in just a moment. But he is looking so cool. All right, let's take a look at this psych club right quick and just familiarize ourselves with it first of all here because it actually has the ability to pop off of here and you see you have the moon shaped crest there and this is his psych club we saw this in the cartoon and I believe this is when it's glowing like to be able to hypnotize people I'm not a hundred percent sure I'd have to go back and look to see what the difference was between the yellow and the blue but if you'll notice here um, not really sure if there's one side or the other but it looks like you just have to kind of really press oh man it's like it is really there it pops in but it, it does have to stretch this out so I hope it's not made of a material that will easily easily crack because it doesn't fit um, you know easily you have to really push to get it on there and uh, and I don't mean to get through the holes I mean to stretch these moon crests out to go in those holes but he can hold this sight club can hold the yellow orb or the blue orb and they're both translucent and you can see where the hole is it's almost like it made a distress mark up inside of there so you can kind of see that on this side you don't see it in that hole but it made a distress mark on this side. So I'm not sure if that's just part of the production. It's just interesting to note. I'm not sure if everybody's looks like that or not, but it, it's, it's pretty cool that you have two translucent orbs. All right, now I want us to look at the Igora Talisman. And it's back here on this little stick. I displayed it there. But it is from the episode or an episode of Thundercats and it is just really cool. It has all the little details that it had. It's hard for me to see. Yeah, you can see it there. It's like a little skull at the bottom and the little snakes. It's, it's a little talisman called the Igora Talisman. Now, it was inside, or it can be placed inside, because in the episode, it was inside this cool little treasure chest. Now, this was what had the power, but this is what it was stored in. And this looks just like it did in the cartoon. I looked up some of the pictures on Wiki, uh, Wikipedia-type Thundercats thing, and this opens up so you can actually place the talisman directly inside there and you could put little putty there so it could stand up I do believe let me check and see and yes it will work you put some of the sticky tack for poster board or putty I call it I've got the blue down in there so that you could actually have it standing up kind of like it was in the cartoon so when he opens it up it's there but then you can also remove it too 
so that's really cool look just take a look at all the details I just love it when they give us these little relics like this that is just so neat I have to create a story with that in uh, either my Masters Universe along with Thundercats storyline or who knows maybe I'll get into doing some stories with Thundercats I'm hoping to start part four of Masters of the Universe the story hopefully soon and it's things like this that I want to look up to you know or have as options to do side quests uh, even if it does include Thundercats and even villains of the Thundercats um, in travels or I don't know dimensions or whatever we could come up with in a ma it's my imagination we'll do what we want right <laughs> but this is just such a cool relic I love it love the skull and the way these things come out. looks just like it did on the cartoon Thundercats and uh, Hanna-Barbera they just did such an awesome job uh, Rankin Bass I'm sorry it wasn't Hanna-Barbera what am I saying it was Rankin Bass same ones that did like Rudolph and you know the miser brothers at christmas and stuff did uh the actual cartoon of um thundercats they use some of the same voices if you'll go back and watch some of those christmas specials um they use some of the same voices in their cartoons like thundercats and silver hawks and um the sharks as well uh, which i've not seen that cartoon but i have seen silver hawks <laughs> But this is really cool. Awesome. And so Mumra gives Aluro this map, the scroll, which contains a map and a riddle. And he reads the riddle out loud to us. Through mountains high and valleys low, to find the Agora talisman, you must go. Through stormy mist, you take the ride until you reach the unlit side. Hmm, interesting riddle. We must go and see if we can find the Agora Talisman. <laughs> All right, we're having fun here, but it is time now to measure our Aluro. And he comes in right at seven inches tall. So that is excellent. And we'll definitely compare him to some other Thundercat figures and, and bad guys here in just a moment in comparisons. But that's awesome. But now, let us go ahead and do his articulation. Check that out. All right, bringing our Eluro on in here so we can look at his articulation. We're going to see about this head. All right. He's going to be able to look up about that much, which is not very much because the hair, you know, does hit the back back here. So it's going to hinder that a little bit, that ability to look up. But he is going to be able to look up some. And then he's going to be able to look down a good amount. And even the front parts of the hair. And it's very soft. That'll go up. His head will go down. That's looking pretty good. He's look, able to look down pretty good because he's going to look down on most people because he's supposed to be tall. And he even gets some head pivoting, which is cool. He does get a little bit of head pivoting. I just love that face sculpt. He's just a very unique character just in general. But even with all that hair, he does get a little face, a little bit of pivoting, head pivoting, and his head will maneuver. And I still say he needs more of a neck. He just doesn't have much of a neck. This should have gone up just a little higher, uh, the neck piece, and then the ball joint go with it so that he could have gotten a better, uh, and I've even tried just barely putting it on. It doesn't really add a whole lot of height on there because, and then when you turn it, it's going to pop off um, anyway. But um, if you pop it all the way on, he will be able to go about that far over. It just looks like a head sitting on shoulders, no neck. Um, and, and I think he had a little bit more of a clearance than that. And it would have also added some height to him, which would have been, been good, you know, right? All right. He has the ability to go better than T-Pose. I mean, look at that. That is just awesome. He's got a wingspan, this dude. He certainly does. And he will also go 360. 
gets good range there everything's very tight and fluid he's got some nice looking arms everything looks just like it did in the cartoon he's got he's got bicep swivel he's got single jointed elbows with the swivel at the elbow as well he's got horizontal hinges and swivel at the hands he has a ball joint down inside of this piece that is a separate piece and dude's jacked he's got some he's got some awesome six-pack abs that it don't go all the way because of the ball joint but he has the ability to do the hula hoop action so he'll crunch forward about that much he'll bend back slightly it's about as far back as he's going to bend the extreme amount but he will be able to tilt some left and right just not a whole lot and he also will swivel at the side he will be able to turn from side to side so that's good moving on to his legs we get similar legs kind of like uh, as far as in design anyway to what we saw in Hachiman because you see the pant comes down to the boot and hides the joint but if you turn back here you see the joint so make sure you have it turned the right direction like so so then when you bend it that single jointed knee will be able to bend and uh, you also have rotation at the knee he's going to be able to get full splits he does have the thigh rotation I feel like the plastic on this dude and just the overall feel of him and build of him is a little sturdier than what Captain Shiner was I was just disappointed with him anyway you can check out my review on Captain Shiner awesome figure but just has some flaws and uh, so far I've not really seen any major flaws other than his head uh, just the neck seems to be way too little looked way too short or whatever but uh, he'll be able to kick up a really good amount he'll be able to step back get those strides in there I mentioned also it's not really a boot cut but he does have the ability to rotate at the knee he's gonna be able to go full tiptoes there he'll be able to go up a pretty decent amount as well and he has excellent rockers which gets some of those stances I was getting earlier and yet again in this wave they all now we can say it have that peg at the front instead of the back which I find is interesting it's kind of a throwback to the original classics when they did that in the early part of the line and then they eventually moved it back here I know why they did it for uh, um, Wiley Kit, but I'm not sure exactly why they did it for the rest of them. Wiley Kit needed it so she could rest on that that hoverboard, but I don't know why they did it for the rest of them, but that's fine. It's just unique to this wave. And this is such a cool figure. I think that this figure and Hachiman are my favorite as far as accessories and build and just overall fun factor. Um, definitely love Wiley Kit to have her finally in the collection since she's a core good guy Thundercat character. But as far as the action figure judging it, just judging, judging it by the fact that it's an action figure, I like Aluro and Hachiman. You tell me what you think, but this guy, he is so cool. I think I covered all the uh, all the articulation. This is a very soft rubber here, this, this loincloth that kind of comes around back, and then these pieces here. None of these are removable to my knowledge, but it's all really well done. It's a very soft quality type plastic that will hold up. And it just he's just looking awesome. And I love this hand as so he can kind of do spells and and wave it over his, you know, over his his orb and or over somebody, you know, as he's trying to hypnotize them. You know, he can wave it over you. He's like, Alright, I am now going to control your mind, and your weak mind cannot resist. <laughs> Ah, your weak mind cannot resist my powers of persuasion, especially since I have the Igora Talisman. <laughs> and now, let's take a look at our Luro along with some other action figures in comparisons.
And first let's look at Aluro next to some good guys here because I remember him and Tigra really going at it in one of the episodes and man this is what's so disappointing. I mean yeah I mean if you look his chin comes to about you know Aluro's uh, chest so his head sits higher up but as far as height to the top of Tigra you can't really say that Aluro towers over Tigra or Lion-O here. Uh, it actually looks like that they're all about the same size, the seven inch scale, which is what I was worried about. But he does have the illusion <laughs> of being taller. Um, you might have to just kind of, if you're going to do photos and want him to tower over them, you might have to just give him a little bit of, you know, some lift on your, your platform or your area of, of staging. Because um, technically, you know, he's his shoulder comes to about Tiger's chin, but Tiger's got a tall head and he's got a squished little head and so it makes it look like, I don't know, just makes it look odd because look, the top of his head comes to about the top of his head. So I don't know, um, again, if they had given him a longer neck um, and maybe even filled out his head vertically a little bit more I don't know I mean it looks right in one way but I do say it looks kind of like his head sits on his body without any neck uh, let's take a look okay there's there is a Luro in the cartoon so you know there's a side-by-side -side comparison pretty much and yeah I mean it's close but there again I just wish somehow they could have given him some height even if they had to make him seven and a half inches, that would be better than him being, you know, out of scale. Because he was, even says in the bio we read, he towers over the other others. So, I don't know. Anyway, looking good, though. I like him. Just wish he had been a little tall. And here he is next to Captain Hammerhand. He does look taller than him. But look at how big Rattaro is next to him. I mean, if they could have done it with this guy, made him big and his features, you know, larger, they could have done it with our Aluro here, obviously. So I don't know. I just wish they had, you know, they've definitely, they've definitely paid attention to a lot of, you know, details, attention to details in a lot of respects, like these awesome artifacts and accessories and things that you know that even even their feature physical features like in the face and and clothing and colors I mean this Rattaro just knocked it out of the park I really like him but Aluro I just wish they had noticed and really taken in their own bio that says hello he towers over the other figures right but anyway that's enough that's enough of me griping about that Let's move on to some more comparisons. And here is our Aluro next to Mumra the Ever-Living. <laughs> you cannot brainwash me, you scum. <laughs> you can't even control the mind of Mermut or Mummut. <laughs> All right, there they are, and you can see how Mumra towers over Aluro, and there again, you know, they could have given Aluro some height, but it looks good. I like it. He's so cool. I like Mumut back down there, and uh, just love how, you know, Mumra turned out. You can see my review on him if you haven't already. That was a lot of fun. You need to check it out because we actually go into the pyramid. All right, cool. And here is our Aluro next to, just for fun, a Mortal Kombat Kentaro by Storm's Collectible. Storm Collectible does awesome Mortal Kombat figures. They are tall and huge and big and bulky and amazing. And I like this one because it looks like it has cat-like features. Uh, has stripes on its, you know, uh, back like a tiger. Has even uh, facial features, kind of like a tiger uh, or a cat. 
and so I like kind of putting him in with uh, my Thundercats universe uh, or even my Motu universe but uh, Aluro is like I can even brainwash and hypnotize this mammoth of a character named Kentaro to do my bidding <laughs> Yes, but you can't control me, you bumbastardly lunatic. You can't control Slide, yes? Oh, you don't think that I can, hey? You doubt my abilities to control your feeble little mind, you lizard. Just watch this and learn. I want you now, lizard, to scratch your behind. Yes, of course. I, I feel like I have a flea down there. I, I gotta scratch my behind. What am I doing? See, mutant, I have the power to control you. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us today for this Super Dave review of Aluro because these Thundercat villains are really shaping up to be some of the best characters especially on the shelf if you collect these and want to just display them the way you remember them in the 1985-86 series Thundercats they just look phenomenal yes they have some issues but overall we love the way they look and this Aluro is no different so come back and see us again thank you for joining us and don't forget don't underestimate the power of Aluro. Can't wait to see the rest of the Thunder, well, I should say Lunatacks that will be coming out in the Thundercats line. God bless, and here's some photos in the photo gallery.